Friends, if you remember, in the last video, we have seen that JavaScript engine creates execution context and it will provide two things for us. One is global object, that is nothing but window object and this variable. And at the global level, this variable always points to that global object. Now, let's see some more things that happens inside the execution context. So, in the previous video, we have executed empty JavaScript file, right? And we got that window object and this variable. So, now let's write something here. I will write variable name equal to Srikanth. Srikanth. And let's close this. After that, let's take a function. I will call it as greet. And let's open this. So, here something like code. Now, what happens when we run this code? Friends, when we execute this code, we all know that first JavaScript engine first creates a global execution context and it will provide window object and this variable. But thing is, global execution context is created in two phases. First one is creation phase and second one is execution phase. And we'll talk about these two phases in the next video. But remember that always execution context is created or always execution context contains two phases. First one is creation phase, second one is execution phase. So that first phase that is creation phase looks something like this. Okay. So you can see guys execution context global. So this is the execution context. It contains two components. First one is memory component. Second one is code component. So what is memory component? Friends, when we run that JavaScript file, parser recognizes that there are some variables and functions. Hence after that, immediately a memory space is allocated to all that variables and functions and that variables and functions will go and sit the, sit in that memory space. This mechanism of allocating memory to variables and functions at first itself is something called hoisting. But we'll talk about that in the next video. I don't want to confuse you. So it will store like a key value pairs. Here name is the key and Srikanth is a value. Here grid is a function name and here function goes. And here I want to tell you two things friends. First thing is here, for the sake of simplicity, I have written Srikanth, but at the creation phase, always remember that JavaScript will not put actual value. Instead of that, it will put a special value that is called undefined or it's just like a sticker. It will attach a sticker called undefined to that name variable. Okay, it will not give actual value. That is the first thing. And second thing is here entire function, including its body is stored in the memory. Okay. So this is the function name and inside that function entire function body is stored. So these are the two important things we have to remember and we'll talk about that why it is storing undefined at first in the next video. Just remember that it will store undefined and this entire box, this entire memory thing is called variable environment. Okay. Now look at the right side. So this is the code component. That means this is the place where code executes line by line. You can see here code to be executed in a synchronous manner. Now what is that synchronous manner? Friends, JavaScript is single threaded, right? What is that single threaded? That means it can only execute one instruction at a at one point of time and synchronous manner is nothing but it will execute the second instruction if it only completes this first instruction. Okay. And it will follow a order. First, it will execute first instruction and next it will go to a second instruction. And after that, it will go to a third instruction. So like that, it will follow a certain order. So this phenomenon is called synchronous manner. So that's why JavaScript is single threaded synchronous programming language. Now let's see a term called lexical environment. You can see here guys, variable environment is nothing but it tells where the variables live and how they are accessible or available to others. You will get a clarity about this variable environment as you follow along in this series. Okay. Next we have a term called lexical environment. Now what is this lexical environment? Whenever execution context is created, lexical environment is created. It means or it tells or it shows where something is physically sitting here. That means a piece of code. So where a piece of code is physically sitting. Let me show you that friends. Let me go to app.js. So here inside this greet function, let's take a function and let's call it as greet to uh, greet to and let's open parentheses. Let's open the brackets. So here again, we'll write some code. So here this greet to function is lexically sitting or physically sitting inside the greet function. Okay, so that is about lexical environment. Now, why are we using the term lexical? Why are we stressing that word lexical? That means it's a hierarchy. Okay, lexical means it's a hierarchy or order. Again, it will be very confusing to you about that hierarchy and order. But you will understand that 
if you follow along with me in this series when we talk about that call stack okay for now the reason i have taken this lexical environment is i want to introduce you with two things first thing is variable environment and second thing is lexical environment there's a lot more about this lexical environment and we are going to learn that in the later videos now let's recall everything once again so friends when we run our javascript code execution context is created and it contains two components first one is memory component and second one is code component in the memory component memory is allocated to all variables and functions and they will go and sit in that spot next engine will take that variables and values and it will execute the code and one more thing here why are we using the terms called memory component and code component friends actually there is nothing like components it's just for our easy understanding we are using the terms actually only two things happen first thing is memory space is allocated and variables will go and sit in that memory and engine will take that variables and functions and execute the code that's it okay i hope you understood these concepts guys next video is going to be very interesting because we'll talk about function execution context and how code executes in two phases all you have to do is just hit that subscribe button and follow along with me in this series trust me you'll understand everything i'll see you in the next video thank you